Throughout the ages, there exist quiet but courageous groups of heroes who love and cherish the lives of all beings. With their great compassion, these enlightened individuals have a clear-sighted understanding that, like human beings, animals are also sentient and are capable of feeling love, courage, protectiveness, pain, sorrow, and a range of other emotions. These individuals are heroes because they go against the current trends and social norm to live their lives as compassionate vegetarians. Their ideal is a noble one, and their compassion is truly admirable. Who are these heroes? They include past enlightened masters, yogis, spiritual leaders, scientists, artists, writers, celebrities, and other everyday fellow human beings. In admiration and gratitude, on our program we would like to honor these loving and compassionate vegetarian elite on behalf of our animal friends and co-inhabitants of our beautiful planet. A gracious greeting to all viewers and welcome to Vegetarian Elite on Supreme Master Television. On today's segment, we will share with you some amazing historical insights and current creative campaigns on vegetarianism from our interview with Ren Berry, a best-selling author, historian, philosopher, professor, and vegan raw foodist. Mr. Berry's unwavering belief in the vegetarian diet began during his teenage years after discovering the writings of one of the foremost English Romantic poets, Percy Bysshe Shelley, who advocated for vegetarianism. Subsequently, he discovered that many of his intellectual heroes, such as Nobel laureate writers George Bernard Shaw, Isaac Basavis Singer, and universal genius Leonardo da Vinci, were among some of the vegetarian elite and decided to adopt a more compassionate diet for himself. Well, I became a vegetarian uh, in my late teens uh, when I was a student in school, and uh, I, was, I was in the process of learning about all these great figures in literature and history who were vegetarians. And uh, at the same time, I learned about the suffering that animals experience. Before, just before they're slaughtered, they excrete adrenaline, and it saturates all their body tissues. And that, when I learned that, I, it prompted me to uh, become a vegetarian. You know, when I realized that animal, eating animal food entails suffering of other creatures, that persuaded me to. Although what moved Mr. Berry to transition his lifestyle were ethical reasons, he noticed that his health and outlook also immediately changed for the better. Through the years, his diet has become more pure and simplified. I've evolved as a uh, lacto-vegetarian in, in, into a uh, vegan. Mm -hmm. And uh, then as I f finally, well, for the past uh, 12 years, I've been a raw, uh, raw foodist. Wow. I eat uh, primarily fruit and uh, salads. And so uh, I can uh, just buy fruit. Uh, at a fruit stand and uh, fuel myself whenever I'm I'm hungry. It doesn't require cooking or you know wasting time uh, toiling over a stove. So it's a very uh, efficient way to live. How do you feel? Oh, well, I feel energized and have uh, unflagging energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Ren Berry's soon-to-be-released book, *Fruits of Tantalus*, a history of vegan raw foodism and fruititarianism with recipes, explores the anthropological, historical, and religious roots of raw foodism. In addition to raw foods, vegetarians enjoy visually appetizing and scrumptious cuisines made with creativity and compassion. During our interview, Mr. Berry explains to us why the vegan diet is a vital part of humanity's development, citing his years of scholarly research. I, uh learned uh, more and more about uh, uh, our uh, genetic and, and uh, early anthropological uh, history through uh, gathering and through the eating of uh, fruit that, that humans have evolved. Now, anthropologists have shown that uh, the, it's fruit, really, that, uh, when, that is responsible for uh, the uh, development of the big brain in humans. And uh, uh, she did a comparative study of uh, the uh, brains of, of uh, 
uh, primates, the frugivorous primates, like the spider monkeys, and then the uh, leaf-eating monkeys, the howler monkeys. And she found that the, the brains of spider monkeys were twice that the, the, of the leaf-eating monkeys. And she theorized that. The fruits, right? Yeah, it was really the, the just cultivation of fruit, mm -hmm. you know, the eating of fruit that uh, is responsible for the evolution in brain size. Mm -hmm. And that uh, hunting is, is a, but it's a very fruitless enterprise. And, uh... His careful study of cultures and anthropology have garnered Mr. Berry widespread recognition. He has been invited to lecture all around the world, from vegetarian associations in the United States, to animal rights meetings in Brazil, to World Vegetarian Congress in Germany. Mr. Rin Berry was born on the island of Honolulu, Hawaii, USA, and spent his early years growing up in Florida. After high school, he embarked on studies of ancient history and comparative religions. He graduated from the University of Pennsylvania and completed his graduate years at Columbia University, both prestigious and selective Ivy League higher learning institutions in the United States. Nowadays, he contributes his knowledge as a professor for a unique graduate course at the New School of Social Research in New York, USA. And now you teach a college course about vegetarianism, yes, right? Yes, it surveys the history of uh, vegetarianism mm -hmm. from uh, at the axial age, which is around mm -hmm. 600 BC, to mm -hmm. the present, from, you know, from the earliest written records mm -hmm. that we have. This call called the New School University. I give a course there, and uh, mm -hmm. I also lecture fre frequently. And uh, usually right, twice a month, I'm called upon to to give lectures at uh, local and uh, foreign and uh, uh, far-flung vegetarian societies. Mr. Berry adds culinary expertise to his very list of interests having learned under Indian, Chinese, and Japanese chefs. In his book, Food for the Gods, Vegetarianism and the World's Religions, Mr. Berry combined his knowledge of religion, vegetarianism, and foods to include conversations with prominent vegetarian thinkers from each of the world's religions. Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Towards the back of the book are vegetarian recipes from each religious tradition. Mr. Berry has authored several other books on top of this, including his popular best-selling restaurant guide, The Vegan Guide to New York City. When we return from these messages, we will find out how an encyclopedia has even sought out Mr. Ren Berry for his knowledge on vegetarianism in history. You are watching Vegetarian Elite on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our special on author and historian Ren Berry, Discovering the Roots of Vegetarianism. If you ever come across historical records of vegetarianism in the Oxford Encyclopedia, you will now recognize the author. In uh, 2004, I was commissioned to write a, uh, an essay on the history of vegetarianism for the uh, Oxford Encyclopedia of uh, American Food and Drink. And then uh, subsequently, uh, I was commissioned to write a condensed version of that article and uh, uh, also a, his a history of veganism and uh, raw foodism for, for a I, uh, the Oxford Companion to American Food and Drink, which was published last year. So uh, it's interesting to me that uh, uh, this is a book that is not intended for vegetarians, but it uh, mm -hmm. will, is being used by, uh, you know, gastronomic uh, professionals and you know, culinary mm -hmm. uh, people. As the public becomes aware of the benefits of a plant-based diet, they will discover the supportive research and testimonies from the medical community and the athletic professionals that it is the optimal way to live and enjoy life. The medical evidence, of, of course, has uh, become very uh, persuasive and uh, 
cogent on, on that score. Uh, doctors like uh, Dean Ornish and McDougall have discovered that uh, and have shown that eating a vegetarian diet can uh, reverse heart disease in many mm -hmm. cases and uh, also uh, slow and retard the, uh, the spread of cancers. At the top athletes uh, today are uh, vegans now mm -hmm. and, and certainly in the endurance sports. You know, people like uh, Carl Lewis, who holds the record for the greatest number of uh, gold medals, mm -hmm. won in the track and field at the Olympics. And uh, the man who holds the uh, number of uh, uh, first place uh, finishes in the triathlon, Ironman triathlon, is uh, competed as a vegan. So uh, the elite among uh, athletes now are uh, following a vegetarian regimen. In the worldwide scramble to improve human and planetary health, Mr. Renberry's opinions and solutions regarding climate change and healthcare reform are rather simple. Consuming uh, fruit and vegetables uh, is, uh, reduces one, the carbon emissions, of mm -hmm. course, and uh, the slaughterhouse is mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest sources of uh, planetary uh, pollution and carbon emissions. You know, if we eliminated slaughterhouses, we would drastically reduce the carbon emissions and, and, and then the greenhouse gases and mm -hmm. certainly the, the animals that are raised for uh, slaughter, they r liberate methane into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, so uh, it would certainly be a great uh, contribution to the uh, sanity and health of the planet if people were to to adopt a vegetarian diet, a vegan diet, ideally. In deciding what to put up on our plates, we must carefully consider the health hazards of consuming a meat-based diet. Mr. Renberry alerts us to the shocking medical indications that common maladies like Alzheimer's could actually be misdiagnosed, incubated, mad cow disease. Mad cow is uh, rampant uh, throughout the world, of course, uh, even, even in the U.S. Uh, uh, it's, mad cow is, is quite pervasive, unfortunately. The, uh, the truth about mad cow disease or bovine spongiform encephalitis is suppressed, mm -hmm. and uh, right. uh, we don't examine the, the our cattle and our livestock properly. And of course, uh, because we feel it would be detrimental to the economic interests of the, of the uh, cattle mm -hmm. industry. But uh, many of the diseases, uh, such as uh, Alzheimer's and other uh, cognitive diseases, are actually uh, um, misdiagnosis of, of uh, the BSE, or mad, what they call mad cow disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably widely, uh, you know, widely contagious. Um, but uh, it's, it's hushed up and suppressed by the meat and dairy mm -hmm. industry. They do autopsies and they find, you know, find people with all these Alzheimer diagnoses often have, you know, mm -hmm. spongiform brains. You know, their brains are perforated by right, the... Right. Okay. You know, it incubates. It takes uh, so, as often, you know, as 12 years or more to incubate. Today, for a multitude of good reasons, more and more people proudly proclaim themselves as vegetarians. There is a common misconception, however, that eating a vegetarian diet that includes fish and eggs makes one healthier. The reality is contrary. They have these farm, farm-fed uh, fish and the uh, fish are now intensively reared much as uh, cattle and uh, chickens are you know battery conf confinement and uh, they're injected with hormones and uh, they uh, they've diagnosed uh, a form of a BSE among among fish now and fish are sentient cre creatures they have eyes they have a spinal cord they experience uh, 
suffering and pain as, as much as uh, any uh, land animal, and mm -hmm. uh, we certainly have no right to invade their, their habitat and uh, uh, terminate their lives mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, for food. Certainly, from a health point of view, they, uh, they um, absorb the heavy metals and the, and the water, and uh, their flesh is even more toxic than that of a quadruped. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, eggs are are just uh, em embryonic, you know, ch ch the embryos of chickens. And mm -hmm. uh, chickens in the wild, they hide their eggs from uh, predators, and uh, you know, they certainly are not. It's to take them is is really a violation of the. Uh, second uh, precept of uh, Jainism and Hinduism, which is uh, non-stealing. Greetings, affable viewers. We're glad you're here on Supreme Master Television's Vegetarian Elite. We are rejoined by our guest, best-selling author, historian, philosopher, professor, and vegan raw foodist, Ren Berry. Last week, we learned how Mr. Berry became vegetarian in his teenage years after studying the writings of the world's brightest thinkers and vegetarian advocates like artist extraordinaire Leonardo da Vinci and Nobel laureate writer George Bernard Shaw. Mr. Berry cited from his scholarly studies why humans are designed for a plant-based diet and the detriments that meat consumption is having on our health and the well-being of our planet. On today's show, we will gain insights to some notable figures in our history who were also proponents for a cruelty-free lifestyle, citing from Mr. Berry's extensively researched best-selling books. Well, it struck me uh, at the time that I became a vegetarian that there was very, very little had been written on the history of the movement, and it's actually a very venerable movement that extends back uh, you know, thousands of years. And it starts with uh, Pythagoras on the West. He founded the first vegetarian society, essentially. And uh, members of the Pythagorean order uh, were, had to take a vegetarian vow. And uh, they were primarily a school of philosophy. In fact, Pythagoras coined the term uh, philosophia. And uh, they studied higher mathematics and geometry. And he found that eating a vegan diet, essentially a vegan diet, was conducive to higher higher thought, and uh, he uh, was also an ethical vegetarian who uh, was opposed to the sacrifice of animals in the temples of uh, ancient Greece. And then, of course, in Asia, the great sages of uh, the Axial Age, like the Buddha and Mahavira, are profiled in here. And they uh, led a uh, movement against uh, the uh, eating of an and sacrifice of animals in ancient India. China, and some of the, the American pioneers like Sylvester Graham and Bronson Alcott, who was the father of uh, famous American author Louisa May Alcott. He started the first uh, vegetarian vegan commune in uh, Massachusetts early in the 19th century. And then Ben Franklin, one of the founding fathers, was a vegetarian wow. and writes about it in his autobiography. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, even in the U.S., it goes back uh, I know. Several hundred years. And then prior to that, there were many indigenous American uh, tribes who uh, were vegan, especially in the southwestern U.S. There were a number of uh, agriculturalists and vegan groups among the uh, American indigenous people. Mr. Wren Berry drew upon his scholarly historical knowledge and his intrigue for the vegetarian movement that spanned several millennia to write the book, Food for the Gods, vegetarianism and the world's religions. Within the text are mentions of the world's prominent religions and their roots in vegetarianism, as well as interviews with religious leaders that offer honest glimpses into their lineage of practices. The culturally diverse recipes included in the book add a unique flavor to the publication. One reader called it a cookbook for the inquisitive mind. I learned that uh, the founders of the world's great religions were vegans, and uh, that prompted me to write this book, uh, which is a study of, of uh, 
veganism in the world's religions. The format of the book is uh, we, it's divided into two sections. So the so-called Ahimsa-based religions of Asia, which have as their first commandment uh, Ahimsa, which means uh, nonviolence to all living creatures, and followers of these religions, which include Taoism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Hinduism. They all uh, adhere to the uh, first commandment of and then I contrast those religions with the Western or the Abrahamic religions. In my research, I discovered that originally even the Abrahamic religions were, were vegan. And uh, there's an essay on each of the major religions. And uh, each essay is followed by a, an interview with a, a vegan from each, each tradition. Well, uh, just... Uh, I, in antiquity, for example, it was very difficult not to be a vegan mm -hmm. uh, because animal flesh was available only to uh, the uh, plutocrats and the aristocrats and you know, the priestly caste. So the average person uh, in the Mediterranean basin, for example, would not have been eating animal flesh except on sacral occasions. So uh, the great mass of people in antiquity were, were vegans. And Jesus uh, belonged to a sect uh, uh, called the Essenes, or actually the Ebionites, which was a subsect of the Essenes, who were uh, anti-sacrificial, and they were protesting the sacrifice of animals in the uh, Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And uh, he, uh, in the Gospel of the Ebionites, and, it's, and even in the uh, uh, and the synoptics, you can find uh, evidence of, of uh, his uh, anti-sacrificial views. And uh, there's no evidence that he consumed animal flesh as a living, unresurrected being. And in the Gospel of the Ebionites, he said, I've come to end the sacrifices. And if you do not uh, desist from eating animal flesh, the wrath will, will not turn from you, which is, is taken as a prophecy that the the temp second temple would perish, which it actually did, because they didn't stop sacrificing animals until the, until the temple was destroyed. He went into the temple and liberated the animals and mm -hmm. uh, said, do not turn my father's house into a meat market. And, uh... Moreover, having studied and translated ancient scriptures from Greek and Latin, Mr. Berry helps to explain the original meanings of some familiar miracles in the Bible and their often misinterpreted symbolic significance. Well, even in the, the uh, uh, miracle, you know, the so-called miracles of feeding of the multitudes, um, according to Irenaeus, who was one of the early uh, church historians, there was no mention of fish in the earliest accounts of those miracles as strictly bread. And uh, I'm, I, I read Greek, I actually studied Greek in school, and, and I tra actually translated in the Gospel of John the passage which refers to uh, the uh, multiplying of loaves and fishes. And the word for fish is uh, opsaria in Greek, which the, of which the uh, the original meaning is a relish, you know, like like pickles mm -hmm. and ta tahini and that sort of thing. And so it seems far likelier that he would have been multiplying relishes and bread rather than fish. So uh, it's been mistranslated. So you know the the word fish has been improperly imputed to to. Uh, to the miracle, on, uh, the account of John, which is considered to be the most uh, faithful, it's a kind of a mystical interpretation. But you know, he, when he was born, the the uh, equinoxes were precessing into the sign of uh, Pisces, the fish, and so he was considered to be the, the fish man, the uh, you know ichthus. So the symbol of the fish is associated with his uh, ministry. Fishers of man, there's, there's a tr Something like that. An immense uh, amount of this uh, fish symbolism associated mm -hmm. with it. And then, of course, uh, the Christians who were a persecuted minority in uh, ancient, uh, ancient Rome, they used to, uh, to uh, signal each other in code by writing, you know, by, f by forming the, the symbol of the fish on the walls. They would uh, emblazon it on the walls of, 
of the houses and uh, meeting places and to, uh, to indicate when, when and where they would be meeting. Besides unveiling history in his writings, instructing at New School University and traveling the globe for international lectures, Mr. Renberry occupies some of his time chairing various organizations. For his extensive studies, he was elected the historical advisor to the North American Vegetarian Society. I'm the historical advisor mm -hmm. to the North American Vegetarian Society, uh, and uh, I'm on the advisory board of Earth Save, and mm -hmm. I'm on the board of another group called the Meat Free Zone, and they uh, circulate uh, uh, this uh, sort of a diploma to vegetarian restaurants that do not serve animal flesh. Interested in knowing which restaurants hold a meat-free zone certificate? Visit www.meatfreezone.org for a worldwide listing. But if you're in New York, USA, consider picking up a copy of the best-selling restaurant guide, The Vegan Guide to New York City written by Ren Berry and co-authors Max Friedman and Dan Mills. This is the Vegan Guide to New York City, the first uh, exclusively vegetarian guide on the planet. And uh, it's uh, in its 15th year now. When I first started it, it was just a pamphlet with uh, just a handful of uh, vegetarian and vegan restaurants. And now it's... Uh, a voluminous uh, quality paperback, which uh, boasts uh, over a hundred restaurants, exclusively vegetarian restaurants, in all five boroughs. And uh, we have uh, over a dozen raw food restaurants, raw food vegan restaurants. So uh, it's amazing how it's, I can, uh, you know, it's grown in New York City alone. I can bear witness to the fact that uh, mm -hmm. it's flourishing and new, new restaurants are opening every year, vegetarian restaurants. In the past decade alone, plant-based diets have made a triumphant return. People recognize the multitude of benefits simply by making changes to their eating habits. Every year, the Vegan Guide to New York City gets to add more and more pages filled with vegetarian, vegan, and free raw food restaurants, a testimony to the momentum of the vegetarian movement in just one city of the world. Mr. Berry rationalizes that animals are needlessly suffering to satisfy unnecessary dietary desires, while at the same time, consumers are suffering in health because of toxic animal foods. And the planet is in peril largely due to livestock raising. Since turning to the pure vegan diet, Mr. Ren Berry has combined his affinity of history, writing, and the compassionate lifestyle to inspire many. He believes there is no higher calling than that of the vegetarian advocate. Anytime someone sits down to a vegetarian meal, of course, animal lives are mm -hmm. spared. So I like to think of this as being a form of uh, direct action in which I can directly uh, reduce the, the uh, killing of animals by uh, offering people the, the alternative of, mm -hmm. of dining at a vegetarian restaurant, making them aware. Thank you for being our guest on this historical expedition to discover our ancient vegetarian roots with our guide, Mr. Ren Berry. We extend our gratitude to Mr. Berry for spending his time and sharing his wisdom on what he calls the venerable movement of the vegetarian elites. And now, please stay with us for Between Master and Disciples coming up next on Supreme Master Television. May the timeless teachings of benevolent sages help to illuminate your paths. We will see you again next weekend on Vegetarian Elite.